Okay, this is a continuation of the uh, uh, basic starting tour. Let's call it a tour. Uh, we're in the uh, middle of um, electrical work. So uh, this room here, it's got a pretty good size uh, beam. We call this the spider beam. Uh, I think we just coined that term so that everybody knows what we're talking about when we're talking to each other. I don't think there's such a thing as a spider beam, but uh, it was uh, a single pour, uh, maybe 120 bags of cement in it. It goes out across the uh, the roof that you see the edge of there, and it stays. All the beams of the spider beam are directly over top of walls down below. And these, uh, these walls, uh, well, that, that's a column there. <laughs> it's about 35 inches wide. But that, that column is on top of a column down below. And the, the wall parts going out from it with the doors in it, those are sitting over... Um, the the tie beams at the top of the the lower floor column so it's stacked right on top these little little tiny cubicles here they're uh four feet by ten or thereabouts they have uh useless closets we hope the uh, window has been uh, cut out to have render this one, well, all of them have the outer render done. The inner screen is uh, that 532nd screen, still in here for security. And I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. This uh, wall that this window's in, bottom beam, wall, top beam up there. The ends of this are sitting on beams running from the center out on, on the next floor down. So, under this wall here is a wall down below, and there's a big beam under that. It's uh, 24 high and 14 thick. And uh, it got four, 10, 10 number 16 bars plus the, uh, the stirrups. Are, all the stirrups are one size, um, that's not 16, that's, that's number 12 bars in, in, uh, in that beam. And it's got wrapped with 10. The 16s are wrapped with 12 for stirrups. And the stirrups are, um, uh, well, the, the corner radius on the stirrups is the, uh, the size uh, that you can, the minimum, minimum bend radius for a number 16 bar. So when we made the, 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 uh, our metal bender up, uh, we made the radius that is going to bend the bars to to match that. Um, that diameter, that curve, so it doesn't overstress the bars. In any event, there's a wall on a wall, and this beam on the floor ends up completely covering the uh, the 14-inch wide beam down below. It goes right right to the other side of the beam. Doesn't have to meet in the middle, because that's the whole reason for this sort of a spline shape up here in this tiny, uh, hardly usable rooms is between them you get bigger rooms. This is the next room over. And this is another one of those uh, uh, looks like, like 10 by 14 or 15. Anyway, the, the beam on the outside, you know, it's the same thing. Beam, wall, top beam, window, one big casting. The ends there completely cover the 14-inch uh, wide beam down below. And by offsetting one wall in and one wall out, we get uh, actual almost rooms up here, big enough for a good-sized bed and a dresser if somebody wanted to sleep in here. Uh, and it gets a single window. Um, our floor is uh, all going to be uh, covered with something. But you can't stop Boyette from finishing. He he's definitely puts the finish on everything. I mean, you see a lot of uh, concrete in the Philippines is pretty crappy, but he, he he polishes everything. 
The guys that are escaping, that's Benji and Randy, trying to get away. Um, oh, and, and all the rooms go uh, facing the spider beam. And you can't see the daylight up there. It looks the same color as the... The, the end of that, where those beams go out, just goes to daylight. It's open. And uh, there'll be uh, window grills up in there also. Those ones are um, seagull, scenes of seagulls. And they, these have a, a, a radius corner that was just formed when we poured it. The, um, uh, the spider beam, uh, just the spider beam itself, has 570 feet of uh, three-quarter conduit. Uh, each of these uh, beam sections is 14 by 24. And uh, I think there's 26 number 12 bars spread around them. And the, uh, basically, you, it's, there's, there's 10 spokes, but the, each spoke goes clear across, meets, you know, this goes right through the middle. So that would be uh, 10 times 26, 5 times 26. <sighs> 5 times 500. What am I doing? I'm on my blood pressure pills that I can't think. Five. <laughs> Five, 20 is 100. Five, six is 30. It's 120 uh, bars cross over each other in this center. And uh, to make that possible, the first uh, beam across, the bars are the one and a half uh, inches, about three bar diameters cover. The next one sit. You know, the next ones, the bottom ones sit right on top of those. They touch them. And so we have five sets, and, and the height increase uh, comes up to the fifth set, has the uh, three bars of uh, bar diameters of cover to the surface of the concrete. So it's, it's uh, the, the, the last uh, one across is closer to the top, and the first one is closer to the bottom. Uh, and you can see that before it was poured, if we have any pictures. In the middle here, the orange pipes hanging down. Those are uh, can lights. Uh, I think they're 9-watt LEDs. I don't know how many LEDs is in them. One, two, four, five, six. Looks like nine LED bulbs, maybe more. Oh, there's a lot more. And over there, it's got a bunch of them in it. Um, they all go on and off together. Uh, the pipe in the center is uh, to bring some wire down because there's a whole house fan goes in here. It's, uh, this room's uh, around seven meters across, and the fan just goes up to, to the concrete ledge here. That's part of the housing for the fan, that, that round thing that you see above all the doors. So uh, that's like five and a half meters or six. And uh, the blades will run against that, like an inch away. And then the air goes up through the part where you can't see there's any opening, but there is. And uh, it'll go out up there. Or any air that blows across the top of the house goes straight through here and out the other side. Uh, we have no air conditioning, and we don't need it. It's uh, probably 10 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than outside in here right now in some, you know, uh, mid-afternoon. At night it gets cold, <laughs> but uh, this house will work better when it's uh, more of a house. The floor here is not really a floor. There's a big open hole. It's almost as big as the hole up there around that rim. This is, uh, uh, my uh, Asawa calls this an atrium. Uh, not enough light in here to grow plants, but she calls it an atrium. And so when we take up uh, this uh, phenolic board down here, then uh, it'll go straight from the, uh, from the beam to the, the, to the on-grade slab down below. It's like uh, 10 inches or 12 inches higher than the surrounding ground out there. Uh, so it's pretty much on-grade. And there's a whole lot of props under this. This is up here because uh, this is where they, uh, they made up the... Uh, window and door grills. And right now, there's a flange here that's sort of laid out. 
uh, just we have to drill some holes in it and uh, then it gets welded together and then another 40 pieces gets added to that and uh, fan housings which are across the street at the machine shop right now but this is laid out just to, to make sure we had them all and uh, this this is the work table that they uh, they did all the uh, uh, window and door grills on each floor has uh, a theme of windows and door grills we're in a uh, this room's a little smaller I think it's 11 by 12 maybe we made them all different sizes just because we could um, this is some French doors curved at the top because of the because the, there's two the two halves just have pile here and then the right side of that same door would be over here the French doors around what we call an atrium they're giant leaves there's actually leaves bigger than these doors they're scaled down and then there's some leaves that are scaled up just to fill up the spaces um, these will get uh, the left side fixed to the building and the right side is hinged off the left side, so when they fold over, they they are no bigger than uh, than this door. And uh, you can't uh, see below the phenolic board. At least I hope you can't. Um, there's a uh, 38 inch wide, not quite a meter, catwalk, and then beyond that. There's a handrail around this uh, whole atrium, so the uh, the concrete is 42 or 43 inches out from uh, from a post. And if I had those doors as one piece, uh, they would look kind of ugly when they were open because uh, they would wouldn't be parallel to the post, and uh, they'd be uh, uh, able to hit some of the concrete and knock the paint off or whatever. So what we did, we just cut them in half. Made it made them in two halves actually. Just cut the, the drawing in half. And uh, one side gets fixed and that leaves you a 24 inch door to go through. And if these were actual rooms, we would have done something different. But th this is just uh, uh, what I need to hold the roof up. The spider beam is holding the roof uh, above it. And uh, we needed to hold the spider beam up. We tried laying, uh, laying it out with uh, just straight parallel beams across the, uh, the floor down below. It looked like crap. And uh, um, Masawa came by and looked at the drawing there one day and she says, that looks awful. I said, you know, it looks more than awful to me. I, I just can't stand it. She said, well, do something else. If you, if you were seeing the, the phase one original drawings for this house, it looks more like a castle with a bunch of insets and walls. It's all rectangular. And somehow we ended up everything going round. Um, this, is, this is some of the, the door frames. The, the, we have a, a three sizes or two sizes of door frames. And the jam here is, in, in, is sandwiched in between the... Uh, the, the sheets for the for the wall is it's it just the same width as what you want the wall to be so uh, our, our jams are uh, they're not wood with nails on the back when, and concrete mortar they're just concrete like the the same uh, about 8,000 pound mix that we used on everything else anyway uh, all the windows and doors have jams that are cast in uh, they poured uh, like one section between those two columns, uh, it takes a, uh, <laughs> it takes about two hours to pour it, but it takes uh, over a day to get all the uh, uh, rebar and forms set because you're working in a really tight hole. It, I mean, it, you got a 30 foot space behind you, but there's that little room, uh, and there was no ceilings in them then. The walls were done before the roof. So I had to climb over the top and get in there or climb through one of the windows. Of course, this uh, uh, wire mesh was not in the windows when we were, when we were doing all this. It, it's uh, to hold the render. So it wasn't there. But you could jump through that window and people just 
Hard to even slow down coming through those. Oh. Uh, this job site is uh, fairly well equipped. We have a power miter saw and a, a chop saw for steel. A uh, bunch of screw guns. We really, really like those screw guns. And we have different sizes of drills, a couple, three different kinds of circular saws, uh, a bucket full of hammers, uh, hand, hand saws. The screw guns get the most work. And right now I got to drill uh, around 1,100 holes with this. It's a one horsepower. It's the same drill press that I bought as a craftsman in the U.S., except mine there has two horsepower and this one has one. And uh, I've never bought a spare part for the one in, uh, in the U.S. It's identical, same, same thing, same place in China. This is, this is uh, a couple of different uh, coring molds. The big one here we've not used yet. We have to wrap it with galvanized iron and it goes in these, uh, these open ends of the spider beam to make them round because I got some conduit on uh, one for sure and one of them, I don't know how much the uh, uh, skim coat hit it, but I don't think skim coat hides anything. Skim coat's only eighth of an inch thick. Uh, render, here renders three centimeters thick. But the skim coat's still an eighth inch. But I got those pipes hanging out and uh, this thing, The flat side there would be a bottom and the opposite flat side would be the top. And the curve uh, uh, faces the uh, uh, spider beam. So it gives you a curved inner thing and it, is, it would be squared off over here someplace against the beam. But the, uh, that space in there is where those uh, uh, rogue wire or wiring pipes are gonna end up hidden somehow. Oh, that, that's a... Uh, uh, one and a half liter soda bottle gives you some idea of scale of some things. The other one over there did have galvanized on it, but you know, we use everything more than once. Uh, that round thing is the inner round circle for the uh, spider beam. And then we had 12, uh, 12 feet long. That's because uh, a sheet of plywood, a half a sheet of plywood makes 12 feet. And they're two, uh, 24 high, and that's a half of half a sheet ripped down into two, two by eight uh, pieces of plywood. And we're going to use those several more times. We've used them a bunch already, but uh, like on the gutter outside, we didn't want gutters up at the top. Can't clean them. We're old. We're in our, getting close to 80, and uh, so we put our gutter around the bottom of the house. So anything that splashes on it uh, will splash on the wall, but it won't be splashing on dirt. It'll be splashing on concrete. And that's another view of the of the ledge on the uh, on the uh, door. That doesn't show very well. Yeah, it jumps right out there. I know what I'm looking for, and I can see it, but it's, I don't know how well it's going to show in the camera. And of course, I don't know if this is recording. This is the first time I've ever used one of these things. I couldn't get the uh, GoPro to work. I got some research to do. Uh, let's pause this thing too. Maybe we'll go somewhere else.